Design and construction of food premises and food pests and control. The aim of this unit is to introduce you to the construction of food premises and pest control. By the end of this unit you should be able to demonstrate an appreciation of the standards required in a hygienic kitchen, working environment, recognise the signs of pest infestation and know what action to take. Premises, kitchen premises should be designed, constructed and equipped to minimise the risk of contamination. And there are several design principles that must be taken account of. First of all, when designing a food premises, you must look at preventing cross-contamination, continuous safe workflow, personal hygiene facilities, washing and disinfection facilities, temperature control, pest precautions, staff welfare facilities, adequate drainage, good ventilation and lighting, easily cleaned, drinking water or potable water, as water from the main supply, and disposal of waste. And if you look at the internal fabric of a food premises, walls, ceilings, doors, windows and floors should have three main properties. They should be easily cleanable, durable or long lasting, and impervious or non-absorbent. And that last one, that would leave wood out of the equation, which is an absorbent material, so that could hold moisture, and therefore bacteria could survive within the wood. You must not use defective equipment in a kitchen. Equipment should be easy to clean, smooth, so there's no cracks, there's no holes, no awkward corners to clean which could hold food material and bacteria. It should be impervious or non-absorbent, so again that would leave wood out of the equation. It should be non-flaking, corrosion resistant to rust and oxidization of aluminium, durable, suitable for use and colour coded. Colour coding is a system that we use in the catering industry as a method of preventing cross-contamination. We use a separate colour for a separate process within the kitchen environment. For example, we'll use a red chopping board or preparation board with a red handle knife for raw food. We'll use yellow for cooked food, blue for raw fish, green for salad vegetables and fruit, white for dairy products, cheese, sandwiches, baguettes, etc. and brown for root vegetables. The preparation board should also be changed quite regularly because if they are quite heavily scored or scratched then that's almost as bad as having a wooden preparation board. So change them quite regularly if they are heavily scored or scratched. Storage and disposal of waste. Bins and waste are reservoirs of contamination. First of all, let's look at internal bins or internal containers. There shouldn't be any accumulations outside the main bin, so everything goes into the main receptacle. They should be cleanable, preferably disinfectable, because disinfection will kill the bacteria, the spoilage bacteria that cause smells, which obviously could attract pests onto the premises. And they should be emptied frequently, certainly by the end of each shift, but frequently throughout the shift as well. With external bins there shouldn't be any accumulations outside the main bin. In other words, no black bags tied up and left outside the bin which could attract pests onto the premises such as birds and rodents actually clawing at the bags and then attracting other pests. The bins should be held on an impervious base such as concrete or tarmac. Pests do not like open, flat spaces. They like somewhere to hide, like soil or grass or vegetation. So if you keep the bin on vegetation or on grass, it's quite easy then for pests to actually hide. They should also be cleanable, disinfectable, again to kill the spoilage bacteria that produce smells. Should have tight fitting lids and they should be emptied regularly by your local council or local contractor. A little note on the first aid kit. It is a legal requirement, albeit under health and safety not food safety, for all businesses to have first aid kits. And the level of first aid provision is really appropriate to the size and the type of business. 
So the law requires businesses to have adequate and appropriate first aid equipment, facilities and personnel on site to enable first aid to be given. And a very important thing that you should know about first aid kits, they should not contain any medicines, any pills, any lotions, any headache tablets whatsoever. Because a first aid person is not classed or licensed as a dispenser of drugs to enable those to be kept in a first aid kit. Food pests now. Food pests are noxious creatures which shouldn't be there. We've got examples on this slide from the top left hand corner where you've got insects. Working down then you've got rodents, flies, domestic dogs and cats and birds. Pests are animals like us, they thrive if they can find food, moisture, warmth and shelter. Even if a food business has a pest control contractor on his books, it is still a legal requirement for the manager to check for evidence of pests on a regular basis, preferably about once a week. They would delegate that duty to a member of frontline staff and they would physically get down on their hands and knees checking for evidence of pests behind fridges, freezers, cookers, dry goods storage areas etc. And the evidence to look for I've put into three separate columns. I've got insects, rodents and birds. There are three main types of pests. Insects, you need to look out for live or dead insects, eggs or larvae, damage, smell or debris, with rodents, live or dead rodents, droppings, smell, smears and fur, damage, footprints and rat runs. And with birds, live or dead birds, droppings, feathers and damage. Domestic pets are also to be regarded as pests because they carry a lot of bacteria on their skin, in their fur, in their mouth, in their droppings, etc. So dogs, cats and domestic birds are to be regarded as pests. Just think of it, the way a dog or a cat cleans themselves. They lick their ass and they lick in their skin and if you touch their fur then your hands become contaminated. So even from a domestic point of view, be careful when you're preparing food at home and you do have pets. Keep them well away from the kitchen and if you do touch them for whatever reason, make sure you wash your hands thoroughly before re-preparing food. So what's the problem with pests? Well first of all, they cause harmful diseases, including food poisoning. It's the law, and it's been the law since about 1949, where all food premises must be devoid of pests. It could give rise to complaints, lost custom, staff losses, wastage, wastage of food, especially if it's contaminated, contamination and damage to food.